today we're going to be going over the ultimate guide to mining. What we're going to be covering, how we're going to actually go about learning all this different types of stuff, as well as leveling, buffs, and everything that you will probably need to know in order to get into mining and maximize our gold in the future. That being said, let's just jump into learning. Now, learning mining is pretty straightforward. You've just got to find the trainer. Funnily enough, you can't just go to one trainer and learn everything now these days, as it used to be back in like WOD. So you're gonna to have to go to your respective trainers for which different type of mining you're going to want to learn. Now, that being said, we have comprised a list of different types of ones that you can actually go to, mining skill abilities. Now for vanilla and cataclysm is Stormwind or Orgrimmar. You're going to want to go to Gelman Stonehand in Stormwind at coordinates 59.6 to 37.6. And in Orgrimmar, you're going to want to go to Gonto, who in Orgrimmar is at 44.6 to 78.6. Now for learning BC mining, you're going to want to go head over towards Shathrath city and then going over to Fono. Now this is located within the Aldor and you can also go to the respective one within the Scryers if you are with those different types of people. What you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to Fono and go over to him at coordinates 36.0 to 48.6. You'll be able to learn BC mining from there and then go ahead and start leveling it. Now for Wrath, all you gotta do is go over to Northrun Dalaran and go over to Mama Diggs at coordinates 46.2 to 26.6. For Mr. Pandaria mining, you're gonna to wanna to go over to the Jade Forest and find Smelt Master Ashpore. She can be located at 46.0 to 29.4. With WAD, all you gotta do is mine anywhere and you will get a recipe that will unlock your mining ability for Warlords of Draenor mining. With Legion, however, you're going to want to go over to the Dalaran in Broken Isles. Now this can be done with your Dalaran Hearthstone pretty easily, and all you have to do is go over to Mongar, and he is located at 46.53 to 26.90. For BFA with Boralus and Dazar Alor, you're going to want to go over to Mira Kabot at 75.21 to 7.56. For Scoot the Goldsmith in Desire Allure, it is 44.0 to 39.0. Now when it comes towards Shadowlands, all you have to do is head over to Oribos and find Excavationist Afer. Now he is located at 39.9 to 32.0. All of these guys can be found relatively easily. I think the only one that is a little bit skew with and out of the way is the Miss Pandaria one, which is in the Jade Forest. So I'd take note of that if you were trying to learn your Miss Pandaria mining. Now, jumping into leveling, we are going to break down which are the best farms in order to do in order to level up your mining in a relatively fast manner, while also pulling in some decent amounts of gold when you're actually leveling it, as you don't want it to be a complete cop out. For vanilla mining, all you're gonna have to do is head over to Silithus and just go around the entire area. If you just go around the outskirts of Silithus, you'll be able to farm up a decent chunk of gold. The actual gold value does not come from Thoria Moor, however, so I wouldn't be disgruntled if you don't get a lot of Thoria Moor at the beginning, because the item of note that you will be taking into account is arcane crystals, as they fetch the most amount of gold. By doing this, from skill level zero to skill level 270, you'll be able to get a decent chunk of arcane crystals to sell on the auction house, as well as a load of Thoria more. Once you're actually at 270, all you're gonna to have to do is, is smelt dark iron ore, which we will get back to nearer the end of this video in order to maximize and level up our mining in order to get to 300. For Burning Crusade, however, we're going to want to go over to Terracar Forest and farm up Fell Iron Ore. The key items of note for this actual particular farm is Corium Ore, which sells for a stupid amount of gold, as well as Fell Iron Ore, which sells relatively steady. This is a good way in order to level it up to max and also get a decent chunk of gold for your farming of mining. For Wrath, what you're going to want to do is head over to Wintergrasp straight from Dalaran and then go and farm up Titanium Ore. 
The item of note is obviously titanium ore, but you also get a load of sarana ore to go along with this and a multiple amount of eternals to sell on the auction house, which fetches a very strong amount of gold and I find that this is a very steady farm in order to make some decent gold overall. For Cataclysm however, Elementium Ore is definitely the farm you're going to be wanting to actually farm up and this one is located in Aldham. That is typically the best farm for mining at this moment in time when it comes towards Cataclysm farms and the items of note that you'll be getting from this actual particular farm is pyrite ore which sells for a hefty amount of gold as well as a load of volatiles that you'll get along with this while you're actually maxing out your mining for cataclysm. When it comes in regards to Mr. Pandaria, you're going to want to head over to the Valley of the Four Winds and farm the entire zone. The items of note that you will actually be getting is Ghost Iron Ore as well as Black and White Trillium Ore which sells for the most amount of gold. Ghost Iron Ore is typically very cheap but Trillium Ore tends to sell for a lot more as it's a lot more rare but as you are going to be leveling your mining, it tends to sell relatively fast and it also fetches a decent price. That's something you may want to keep into consideration. Now, when it comes to Warlords of Draenor, all you've got to do is go over to Tanan Jungle and farm up Black Rock Ore as well as True Iron Ore. You'll also get Fell Blight from this, but to be honest, Fell Blight doesn't sell for an awful lot of gold and none of these items are really worth anything. But if you wanted to actually level it up to max just to be a bit of a completionist, then I would definitely farm Tanan Jungle as that gives you the most amount of ore for your time invested so you can maximize it as fast as possible and Bing Bang Bush, you've completed it. Moving on to Legion, however, we are going to want to go over to Surama and farm up Fell Slate. Fell Slate is the key item of note as that's the one that will max you out fully and that the other different type of item that you'll get along with this is Laystone Ore as well as that. This can actually net you in a decent amount of gold overall as Legion materials tend to fluctuate up and down so I'd double check your servers if you wanted to try and sell them on a high end. You also do get ranks with this so I would do your quests once they actually pop and this is when you're actually mining you'll get a quest item that says go go do this quest i would highly recommend doing the quests as and when they pop up and then returning back to that farm to max out your mining this is to get yourself fully ranked up to rank three in laystone and fell slate and all of the other different types of ones in general and it just is probably the easiest farm in order to do to maximize all of these different types of ones as Surinar is not very much contested anymore when it comes towards mining, you shouldn't have a problem maximizing your ranks and maxing out your skill cap for this. Aside from all of that, let's jump into BFA. Now, for BFA, if you want to actually maximize it the most is do the same thing when it comes towards your mining, when it comes towards ranks, and that is all of the different types of ores is the Vigil Hill Farm. This is by going over to Tiragard Sound and flying around the entire area and farming up Monolite, Platinum, and Storm Silver Ore. Once those actually pop up on your quest bar, then I would highly recommend actually doing those quest lines as and when you have them and that is so you can actually rank up even faster. Now failing that, once you get to a high enough level, I would head over to Najdatar and farm up Osmanite Ore. This is the last ore that you're going to need ranks in and rank one is relatively easy in order to do. The only rank that's going to cause you a little bit of a problem is getting your rank two. This is by spawning a rare called Avarice and this can be done in order to get hold of the brinestone pickaxe which can drop from any of the mobs. So you are able to actually give in that quest in order to get your rank two. Now, the last part of this for rank three is just mine. Once you've actually got your rank two, it's relatively straightforward to get your rank three and that is by just continuous farming until it pops up and then all you have to do is complete that quest and you will have your rank three. Now moving in towards Shadowlands, I only recommend one thing as ranks aren't really a thing anymore and that is by going over to Ardenweald and farming up Phaedru Moor. I tend to find that this is the best one for gold per hour as well as Sinvir Ore but typically I like to go towards Phaedru Moor as the mobs hit a lot less and you come into a less contact with aggressive mobs when you're doing this as you're probably wanting to actually just max it out and not do a full-on gold farm when you're actually trying to level it up. 
but if you do want to do that then it would be definitely Simvir or in Revendreth but if you want to actually get a decent amount of gold while actually leveling up and not a lot of hassle then it's definitely Ardenwield with Phaedrium Ore. When it comes towards buffs in relation to mining you're going to want to take a hold of three different things and that is enchanting with your Shadowlands Gathering in order to get faster Shadowlands Gathering speeds this can be enchanted and bought off the auction house for a relatively inexpensive amount of gold. And then you can then just enchant your gloves in order to actually fa gather faster within Shadowlands. That one is the one that's going to yield you with the best return because at the moment current content is king at this moment and it does tend to work quite well as it is designed for faster gathering within Shadowlands. Failing that, if you wanted to do old world material farming, then you do have a couple of different things that you can do, and that is the Dark Moon Firewater. Now the Dark Moon Firewater gives you faster gathering speed overall. This is not X-Pack exclusive or anything. You can just drink that potion. You can buy it off the auction house for a couple of hundred gold, and then just drink that potion, and for an hour you have faster gathering speeds overall and it tends to be my staple for gold making in general as I tend to always have the Dark Moon Fire water on me as it is definitely something of note for all of us farmers. Now failing that for different types of buffs there is one buff item that you can get a hold of and this is by going over to Southport within the Spires of Iraq. What you're going to be wanting to do is go over and find the Peons Mining Pick. Now this is an item just laying on the ground as I'm showing you right now and you'll find an item called the Abandoned Mining Pick and once you click on it at coordinates 40.6 to 55.0 you it will grant you with a faster wad mining in order to actually do this farm and this does not need to be equipped or anything it just needs to be in your bag and it will give you faster mining speeds when you're in Warlords of Draenor. So if you're wanting to actually level your wad mining then typically get a hold of that as it will increase your speeds and then you will be able to get that done a lot faster than you usually would. Now we're jumping into our last part of this and that is extra learning is Enchanted Elementium. Now Enchanted Elementium is one of those ones that you can smelt for a hefty amount of gold and you can get a lot of gold return profit for that. Now what you're going to want to do is have at least 300 mining in vanilla mining and then you're going to want to jump over towards Blackwing Lair. As you go into this, once you're going through the actual raid, one of the mobs is called Master Elemental Shaper Crix. Now he actually drops the plans for smelting Enchanted Elementium but you need to be at the skill level 300 in order to actually learn it. Now this is relatively easy when we actually jump onto our next one which is Dark Iron Bars. Now smelting Dark Iron Bars is definitely something that I would highly recommend as it does pull in a decent amount of gold and it's relatively inexpensive in order to actually craft up and do. You're going to need a couple of requirements however and that is by getting a skill required of at least 230 in vanilla mining as well as some item requirements which is two times star rubies, 10 times true silver bars, and 20 times gold bars. If you did the Silifus farm, you would have two of those items already stockpiled for yourself, and all you have to do then is just buy out gold bars on the auction house. Make your way over to the Blackrock Depths and find the NPC Gloom Rel. He is a part of the seven bosses in which you can actually do this if you've actually done the dungeon before. Now, aside from all of that, all you have to do is talk to him and he will open up a dialogue quest line in order to actually hand in those items in order to learn Dark Iron Bar Smelting. And then you can max out your vanilla mining in which then you can learn Enchanted Elementium. So that is the ultimate guide to mining. Please tell me what you thought on the comment section down below. And aside from all of that, guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be soon. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better, then why not check out the Patreon? Members get additional info, gold making resources and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.